Elizabeth, how are you? I'm so happy to be here. How are you guys doing? <laughs> well, I'm very excited uh, to talk about the show, but I also am very excited about this. You were uh, joining us right after your first uh, dentist appointment in, in months. And we were That's just right. dying I, to know uh, how it went. Uh, I, ha I have a temporary crown. I have I had a, I had three cracks in a in a back tooth that have sort of been aching for like six months, <laughs> and I finally thought I better go get it handled. I, I can actually smile mostly, like <laughs> you can see it's a little off still. Uh, and I had a really hard time putting my lipstick on, but I think I did all right. I don't know. I can't tell. I bet but, uh, if I, we, I bet if we hadn't uh, brought it up, no one would have noticed. Uh, Thank you. Well, so I, thank I you meant every word of it. Uh, this is, uh, I want to ask about Press Your Luck. This is a game show from the 80s. And it, first of all, it looks like a lot of fun to host. Second, uh, is it weird looking at old episodes where you are not just with an audience of people, but an audience of people having a, a very good time and, and projecting their joy? Yeah, I, I actually, I read a tweet recently uh, from a Press Your Luck fan that said, Elizabeth is always yelling. <laughs> Thank you for that judgment, one. Two, it's because the audience loves this show. Uh, they are raucous. I mean, you know, they're, they're so happy when someone wins a car, as am I, and they're so happy to see the whammy, as am I. And so it's really, really loud. And uh, the idea of making the show... In the future, I mean, I, I know that we can get contestants in there, um, but you know, I'm def I will definitely miss the live in studio audience, as I imagine you do as well, <laughs> getting through your jokes every night. I do. I feel like a lot of my jokes are getting uh, whammies <laughs> based on not having an audience here. <laughs> Was this a show you watched growing up? Because I have a lot of memories of Press Your Luck. Oh. It was the after school like special that me and my sibs needed to watch every day. We, I, I loved, when they first presented to me, I was like, wait, they're gonna bring back this show that was my favorite thing in the world. And then also the whammies, we, we kept a lot of the old animation style. So it's got this really kitschy uh, whammy to it that just brings back so many memories. So it was one of those things where we just piled onto the couch we ate all, uh, Lucky Charms, which we were not allowed. Those that, that was like our Saturday morning cereal, but we'd sneak it and we would pick out all of the marshmallows out of the Lucky Charms and watch Press Your Luck. That is like a, those are like gold memories in my brain. It seems like it must be a joy to do this job now, but of course you did not set out to be a game show host. It's sort of a nice byproduct of being an actor. Was that something that you always thought you were going to do? Is pursue acting? Oh, no, I didn't decide to be an actor. Really, I didn't decide to be an actor until I was halfway through college. And I, I thought I would be Diane Sawyer or Barbara Walters. I wanted to be, I wanted to be, or be you. I wanted to do that job. And then I got to play, play it to great effect on 30 Rock and, and in many other uh, roles now. I've played a, a newscaster. That's really, I thought I would do like broadcast news. <laughs> You are very good as a comedy newscaster. I, maybe that means that you wouldn't have been perfect for the real thing, but you are as good at comedy. You are the Diane Sawyer of comedy newscasters. Thank you. Yeah, they, uh, I was very happy when Tina Fey sent me to uh, North Korea to do the news there. <laughs> and you actually went. A lot of people thought that was green screen, but you did they, actually People go. don't realize. I was in, yeah, I actually went there. You, uh, you've also um, have uh, made quite a career as a producer. You have a production company called Brownstone that, um, among other things, the Pitch Perfect franchise has tried really hard to give voice to, you know, especially women and, and people who had less of a voice in this industry, uh, you know, still do. But, but I was wondering how much you've seen it change in the last 10 years that you've been doing it. I actually think in the last, I've been doing it, yeah, a little, a little more than a decade now. And I, I think actually we've made a lot of incredible progress. I think that the amount of television and content that's being created is really incredible in this moment in time anyway. Um, but making especially feature films that feature large casts of women is still very, very rare. And so to, to have made Pitch Perfect and, and Charlie's Angels, I mean, if, if, it, if I'm... If that's my legacy of creating things and telling women's stories, female-fronted stories, um, we also have Shrill starring A.D. Bryant. And I just think I will be very happy if that's my legacy in Hollywood. 
Uh, it's a pretty good legacy, and it's really well deserved. I, before you go, I want to ask, because um, we both uh, are parents of two boys, uh, yours are a little older. How is, um, how is school going uh, as we now are in the fall? Um, well, I am still having trouble getting them to wear pants. Yep. And, um, and my son wore a uh, ninja costume uh, last week for school. Just, I just walked in, and he was in a full ninja. And the best part about it, Seth, was I sat there for a minute to be like, is this OK that he's in a ninja costume? And then they went around the room, and another kid was wearing a ninja <laughs> costume, like full like Cobra Kai with the red and everything. And my son was like, what? The like, looked at me like, that's my thing. <laughs> it turns out he wasn't the only one, so. That's, as they get older, they'll realize ninjas shouldn't really present themselves on Zoom like that, you know? Right you away. have to be a little bit yeah, more yeah. secretive. A little more secretive, yeah. He was in the full black ninja costume. The fact that this other kid was also wearing a ninja costume just broke me, though. I mean, this Yeah, I walked this in the boy. other day, and my son was, like, sit, like, sitting on his side, like, on his elbow, wearing a straw hat, and he looked like a Carly Simon record album. So we're all getting, everybody's getting good looks at their kids that we wouldn't get on a normal school day. <laughs> we were, we're really delving into some, like, psyche, you know? Uh, it's, it's, it's like what they wish school was actually like, you know? Absolutely. Hey, uh, all the best to your family. Uh, congrats on the show. It's always lovely to talk to you, Elizabeth. Thank you. Press your luck on Thursday, everybody.